My cheapest luxury bag costs less than this. Hello, welcome or welcome back to Classics with the Quirk, where we talk about contemporary and luxury designer items and brands with a touch of silliness. This is the kind of content that you find interesting. Please do like this video and subscribe for more of it. Thank you. Coming at you today with another tag video. This tag is my cheapest luxury bag. Now, I believe that this tag was started by Super Jacob and inspired by Sophie Shohet. And I'll link Super Jacob's video for you down below. And I was tagged by the lovely and gregarious Caleb Snell. Uh, I was really pleased to be tagged by him. He was super kind and nice in the tagging of me in his video. So that was just like, oh, very, very nice to see. Uh, and I really appreciated his video. He has a wonderful collection, a lot of pre-loved goods, and you know that I'm a fan of pre-loved. And he also has quite a Balenciaga collection as well as a wealth of Balenciaga knowledge. So I would recommend checking him out. I will link his video and channel down below as well for you. And today I am going to be doing my cheapest luxury bag. And I do want to start out by saying that I think that cheapest is like a strange term to use for luxury goods in general, because when I talk about luxury, I tend to say more affordable or less expensive because all of these things are usually quite expensive. And I don't think that $1,000 is necessarily cheap in comparison to $4,000. I would just call $1,000 less expensive than $4,000 because $1,000 is still quite expensive. That being said, I do have my picks today that I would consider quite affordable. And in one case, I would consider cheap. Now I have two bags to talk to you about today. One is actually luxury and one is not considered luxury. I think it's more contemporary luxury. I'm not talking about my coach bags today. I'm not talking about any contemporary designers except for this honorable mention. Aside from the fact that it is, in my opinion, an incredibly cheap bag. Like we're not even talking about like less expensive, more affordable. This was a cheap buy. I also think that it makes sense for this tag because this particular brand is talked about a lot in the luxury community, in part because it is a more affordable bag in the luxury space. So without any further ado, this is my cheapest luxury bag that I own. Definitely hands down cheapest luxury bag. This is a Longchamp bag. It's a, I believe it's a Longchamp La Ployage tote in the small size and this pink color. And the reason this is my cheapest luxury bag, and the reason I'm putting it in this video is because, again, Longchamp is talked about a lot in luxury spaces. People who don't even consider buying coach will buy Longchamp as like a travel bag or something like that. So I felt that it was fine to mention it in this video when we're talking about luxury, even though I don't have any problems with coach either, but that's neither here nor there. Now this bag, I believe, usually retails for something like $120, $150, something like that. But I don't actually know because I did not buy this bag new. I didn't even buy this bag at a discount store like TJ Maxx or Marshalls or Nordstrom Rack will usually have Longchamp bags at a discount, at a, sometimes a very significant discount. But I purchased this bag at neither of those places. I got this bag at the thrift store for $1.80. <laughs> Plus tax, I think it was $2.06. And, and I would call that a good buy. I would call that definitely of all of my bags in my collection, the cheapest one. Certainly the least I've ever paid for a luxury contemporary designer bag in any way, shape or form. And it's in pretty good nick considering. I did have to clean it up. The lining was pretty dirty and it does have quite significant corner wear. Like some of the corners are actually, you know, ripped open here. If I can show it to you. Yeah. So the corners are pretty ripped up, but I don't really care. I don't mind. It doesn't really stop me from being able to use the bag. Some people did suggest that I send the bag into Longchamp because they will service the bag for free or that's what people said. I checked the Longchamp website and according to the Longchamp description, bags that experience normal wear and tear are not eligible to be repaired. So I wasn't really sure. I still could reach out to them. I just haven't yet because I didn't really need to. Really the only problem with having the corners ripped up is that it's not waterproof anymore. And that's not like the biggest thing in the world for me. Uh, it's, it's fine. I actually made a video uh, a while back about comparing this Longchamp tote to another Longchamp tote. I found it at the same thrift store for a couple dollars more. This one was authentic. The other one was not. And I did just did a little comparison. Obviously this is a spoiler that the pink one is the authentic one, but you know, if you want to watch that video, I'll link it for you. It's, it's interesting. I think just to see the, the comparisons, it's not the 
best inauthentic piece I've ever seen. Like it's not great. I think a general person would be able to tell if they knew anything about Leathers or Longchamp, but you know, it's still a video that maybe you'd be interested in watching. So I will again link it. But yeah, so this is my least expensive, cheapest, hands down, luxury or luxury adjacent handbag. That being said, I also have an actual luxury brand luxury handbag that is technically my least expensive or cheapest, least expensive really, and that is this. This is my Louis Vuitton Cabas Meso, and that is the Cabas line, the Meso is the medium size. It's the most closely related to the Neverfull MM in terms of size and shape. The nice thing about the Meso is it does have a zipper. I like the Mesos a lot because they do have a top zipper and I greatly prefer my totes with zippers. Of note, it does have a giant strip of vachetta at the bottom and on the sides. So a lot of people were wary of the Cabas line just because there was so much vachetta on them. I don't mind. I am fine with this, especially because I did buy this bag pre-loved. This bag is from 2001. I was not buying Louis Vuitton in 2001. It is now over 20 years old, and I think it's in pretty good shape considering it's over 20 years old. I got this bag on eBay from a Japanese seller for $279 after taxes and shipping. I think that's pretty dang good. I will say that this bag is a little bit worse for wear. It's not in the best shape. Like you could spend $500 and get a Cabos Meso in excellent shape, like excellent Nick, but I had no problem with buying it in a little bit more beat up shape and then fixing it up myself, which is what I did. I have a video actually coming out soon about me cleaning the bag up and cleaning the canvas and hydrating the vachetta. So uh, stick around for that. Stay tuned for more content. Subscribe, by the way, hit the like, notification bell, like this video, all that stuff. But yeah, so that video is coming out soon. But yeah, I spent under $300 for this bag. Now for comparison slash putting something into perspective is that one of the most popular items from Louis Vuitton, one of the most entry level popular items from LV is the Louis Vuitton key pouch, this little guy. In Louis Vuitton's latest price increase, this key pouch, this clay, went up to $325 USD before taxes. So $325, $280. I think I got a pretty good deal, all things considered. I think that I did pretty well. I like this item a lot, but I like this item a lot too. It's a great work bag. It fits a lot in it. I I, I use this and also in terms of buying this bag pre-loved, it, you know, was pre-broken in so I was a little less hesitant to use it right away as a knock-around bag. I don't worry as much. Like, yes, it has vachetta on it, but the vachetta is already scratched. It's already a little darkened and I don't care if it gets a little bit more scratched or a little bit more darkened. I do buy my bags to use them, but I am more careful with my bags just in general. But for a knock-around work bag, this works great and I don't really mind having it be a knock around work bag. Again, I spent under $300 for it. It's also the nice, thick, like old school Louis Vuitton canvas. Like that's some, that's some thick Louis Vuitton canvas that's in, and it's in great shape. It cleaned up really nicely. Like look at that patina and shine. I'm very proud of this bag. And I think that that really, Caleb mentioned this too. And Caleb's, a lot of Caleb's bags are also pre-loved in that there are so many bags on the pre-loved market that are great bags. They're in various states. You know, they're, you can get bags that are in not that great shape for very, very inexpensive. You can get bags that are in much better shape for a little bit more money. But in general, there are so many great luxury bags on the pre-love market that you can get for really, really good deals if you know where and how to look. I made my own video a little while ago on how to buy Louis Vuitton specifically on the pre-love market. And in that video, I mentioned several different discontinued Louis Vuitton styles, but I also go into detail on what to look for and what things to be aware of when you're buying Louis Vuitton pre-loved, like different kinds of quality or construction issues or wear that you might want to be aware of when you're purchasing online, just different tips and tricks and how to purchase something pre-loved on the internet. And so I would recommend checking that video out if you're interested in dabbling in buying pre-loved. I also have a video that I made about buying pre-loved specifically on the Japanese marketplace, which I will also link because I think it's a really good video personally. Japanese sellers are a great resource for buying luxury pre-loved just because there's so much of it and they are kind of required to be honest, <laughs> which is an extra little bit of, of security that I personally very much appreciate. So yeah, that is my least expensive, 
cheapest luxury bag, my beautiful vintage Louis Vuitton Cabas Meso, and I'm very happy with it. I'm happy with buying bags pre-loved in general. I really like the sustainability too of buying pre-loved items because you can get, again, bags that are in great shape. Like it doesn't have to be, you know, this type of wear on the Vachetta. You could get a beautiful like honey color Vachetta piece or almost pure white depending on how much you're willing to pay on the pre-loved market and still pay less than you are buying new by several hundred dollars, if not several thousand, depending on what the item is. And then you're giving these items new life, you're keeping them out of the landfill a little bit longer. And that's something I really do quick want to just mention about buying luxury goods, both pre-loved and new in general, is that they are built to last. They're made of quality materials that are built to last for a very long time. So if you treat them right, they're going to last a lifetime, if not longer. Like people pass down their luxury goods to their children. So like it can last a while, generations even. And I like that about buying Buying luxury. Yes, these items are very expensive. Even the cheapest items of luxury goods are quite expensive. Like $300 is not an inexpensive product. It's just inexpensive for a Louis Vuitton product. These items are very expensive, but this is 21 years old, right? This is over 20 years old. This bag graduated college and it's still great. It's still serviceable. It's still useful. It still looks good. And there are plenty of items that if you have them for 20 years, even if they last that long, they're not going to look as good or even be as usable or as useful as a luxury good that, you know, was built to last and made of quality materials in that same way. That is a little bit of a tangent, but it is something that I just wanted to mention because I felt that it was prudent to mention in a tag about less expensive items and talking about very expensive items. It is a matter of perspective, of course, but especially in terms of buying very expensive pieces, one of the nice things about buying them is that they can contribute contribute to sustainability, especially in terms of buying pre-loved. And I'm a very big proponent of buying pre-loved. I think there are a lot of great styles. I think there's a lot of great materials out there that are on the pre-loved market and readily available. And again, yes, definitely cheaper in some cases than buying new from the boutique. I still think that buying new from the boutique is great. I think that it is a good experience or it can be a good experience regardless of what has been happening lately. Sometimes it can be a good experience if you get the right person, get the right boutique. And there's certainly something to be said for knowing that 100% your item is authentic because you bought it new from the boutique. There's probably not a question in, in that realm of capacity. I do recommend getting your items authenticated if you ever buy pre-loved. I use real authentication for most of my items and I have a $5 off code for you that I'll, I'll link down below for you if you want to use that because it's a good service. I do like them. I do trust them. They are people run, not computer AI run. So I would not recommend using a computer AI run service, but that is neither here nor there. And that's not the point of this video. The point of this video was my least expensive luxury items. And that is these two things right here. So again, under $300, $2, can't really beat that. And again, in comparison, 325 plus tax. So it's just interesting to think about, especially in terms of perspective that we are willing to pay $325 for something like this. Or well, I paid something like 200 plus tax for this. So this was 230 when I purchased it. But if you want to buy it new now, it's 325 plus tax. That's what's going on in the price increase world. That's just what's going on in luxury. And it's just something again, to always be aware of really when you want to buy the stuff, it's very expensive. That's true. I'm aware. It's very silly. I'm, I'm aware. Do not worry. I am. <laughs> I want to say once again, thank you to Caleb for tagging me in this video and thank you to Super Deka for creating the video in general. I'm going to tag a couple of people down below who I hope will do the tag because I think it would be fun to see what they have in their collections. They consider their cheapest bag. And if you want to do this tag and haven't been tagged, please don't let that stop you. I have not let that stop me before. If I've not been tagged, I do it anyway. I would just love to see what you end up coming up with for your cheapest bag. And if you do not have a YouTube channel and want to just tell me in the comments, what is your cheapest or least expensive luxury item, I would love to know. If you like this video, please do give it a like. It super duper helps the algorithm and subscribe for more content that helps the algorithm even more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.